I'm not an easily frightened person. The older I've become, the less ghosts and monster stories spook me. I've become more frightened of stories related to murderers, rapists, and awful accidents. I'll still entertain a good ghost story, mostly because of what I saw as a kid. A lot of it I can write off as my parents' superstitions corrupt in my child's imagination and filling in the blanks on situations that could be easily written off with logical investigation. But the things I saw and heard that couldn't be written off, not with any kind of explanation, those fuck with me to this day. These are those stories. Believe them if you want to. They're true to me. A new house we moved into when I was 11 was normal enough in the neighborhood was a step up for my last. It was ready to accept us, everything emptied and clean, all except for the shed in the back. After we moved in, my dad wanted to move our garden into it from the garage to the shed. But the shed was occupied. Every wall had sloppily built shelves, and each shelf was packed with all sorts of different containers. Gatorade bottles, milk jugs, mason jars, sunny D, and every kind of cheap water gallon brand you can think of. All of them were filled with water, and every single container was written on. I'm fluent in English and Spanish, but this was different. It was an indigenous dialect from Mexico, similar to New York, but my mom knows a little and claimed that it wasn't that. It was similar. Either way, we needed to move our stuff in, and the water had to go. I dumped them while my dad moved things in, and that was that. But that night, I had trouble sleeping. We had power, but no cable, and this was before we even bothered with internet at the time, dial-up days. I had the Star Wars movie on DVD, and it was on the background while I played with my Game Boy. My TV was next to the doorway to my room, which made it the dark hallway look pitch black. It was a little past 2 a.m. when I heard what I thought was my mom or dad in the hallway. I thought that because the footsteps were adult too heavy to be my sister who would sit at the time. The footsteps stopped in my doorway. I wasn't afraid because we were still unpacking and we'd been looking for this or all that day all day. Still, I looked at the door. From hip level, a bottle was tossed into my room. I know the difference between a fall and a toss. It was tossed. Still, I was unafraid. Why would I be? It was my mom and dad trying to get me to turn off my TV and go to the go, go to sleep. Right. And I called out once, twice. By the third, I was terrified. My parents teased me sometimes, sure, but this was the end of Gambit the Trick. I got up and went to the room. When I saw them sleeping and heard those noises, the sound of your breathing when, you, when you're asleep. Noises you make that you can't mimic because you're not conscious while making them, the ones only your loved ones know. I shook my dad lightly and told him what happened. We went into the room and found a gateway bottle filled with water with the same scribbles on it. I slept on my parents' floor for a few nights. There's a whole host of other mildly terrifying things that happened in the house. But I can't explain someone throwing a bottle that we'd apparently missed out of the pitch dark. That happened, I saw it, there's no convincing me otherwise. It was either some paranormal shit or someone had been watching and knew exactly how to scare the fuck out of me and broke in to do it. The other concrete memory was one that still gives me goosebumps as I write it out now. It was a school night, I remember because I had to miss school because of a sleep loss the next day. I was... Doing homework and I heard a faint sound coming from a small vent cover in my room. I couldn't make out what it was, but I got on all fours to listen. It was a woman, maybe half a dozen of them chanting and praying, praying what I later learned to be Hail Mary in Spanish. Over and over and over again in that weird trance like tone people don when they pray in Eugen. I later learned that this is done for the dead in Hispanic Catholic practices. I was so petrified, I couldn't really articulate to my mother why I needed her attention, because she could see that I was definitely serious. I told her to be quiet and listen, and I could tell that the noise caught her attention the way that it got me. Soon, she was kneeling next to the vent cover listening, completely silent. What fucked with me to this day is the expression on my mother's face. The metamorphosis from confusion and curiosity to horror and disbelief was too much. See, I told you. I said in a tone louder than any sound I've made in the last five minutes. Then I heard what sounded exactly like about half a dozen women saying shh all at once. We immediately got up to get my dad, but we were frantic without explanation. All he understood was that there were intruders in the garage. He grabbed the shotgun and raced to the garage, which was only accessible through the driveway or backyard. The vent we were listening to shared a wall with it. I watched from the living room window. 
but there was nothing. No TV, no radio, and no women. The van didn't lead anywhere else, and there wasn't any TV in the house playing like that. I heard them. I heard that prayer before I ever learned it in a church. Other people have said that she may have been hissing from something in the vent. An animal, maybe, or a piece of faulty equipment. No, it sounded like six women saying shh in different tones of voices. And that happened. No one can tell me otherwise. I heard it. All of the other mildly little terrifying things I can explain away, but I saw that bottle thrown and I heard those women. So I'm a 15 year old teenager. Shit is great. I live with my parents and my brother. I'm far from a believer in the paranormal, which isn't really the desire opening to a ghost story, but we move. Despite not being a believer, I've always felt my house had some sort of entity inside of it. It's been there since the Victorian area and originally was a shady whole house owned by an even shadier businessman. My family is in no way related to this shady businessman. We are Zimbabweans, not sure if I have to clarify, but we are white. To cut to the meat, in 1809, seven people were found strung up in a basement that no longer exists. A seance was performed in that same basement to communicate with the spirits of the dead. The whole house businessman died in the room that I now live in. In 1811, the house was owned by a surgeon who was famously pretty bad. My town has a bar named after him. The house was abandoned until 1847 when the now garden was used to dispose of disease victims. And on top of all that, six babies have died in here from various causes, not excluding dog attack and surgery mishap. Onto the experience of living here, most notably, I once stepped out of my room into the corridor to see a large flaming cross in front of the mirror. It was there for about half a second. Any visitors who come here feel really cold at night and feel scratching on their back. Women with pregnancy-related trauma feel incredibly uncomfortable and now should walk into the kitchen. Friends of mine who stayed over are no longer friends of mine, jokes, but here the least two who won't enter my room. Often, people see floating limbs poking out from behind doors and entrances. People have hellish nightmares, constant tapping and scratching on the walls, door slammed shut. I recall being stared at by an entity from the corner of my room. My brother had woken up with long, deep scratches on his face and hands. My father refused to talk about who he saw and wanted all off. My mother was terrorized by voices whenever she'd home alone. Lights flicker when you approach them. Once you pass them, you feel helpless and incredibly cold. Non-sleepwalkers sleepwalk. Posters and signs are ripped off the walls. I've had my hand grab with immense pressure when I reach into a cupboard for a drink. Women yell. Footsteps come upstairs. Dishes have faces on them. Clothes get ruined. Hats get stolen and never return. People occasionally get flung around. Food spoils in minutes sometimes. It's kind of shitty, but we moved away from that house two years ago, so it's kind of clickbaity, though. Sorry. This one is long, but worth it. When we were about 20, my friends and I were really big into doing scary trips to haunted roads and things of that nature. This one is about Clinton Road being the most haunted road in America. It's so scary, they even made a movie about it. This story takes place before the movie was even a thought. So there was a group of our friends, there were three of us that were the closest, and then two more that would tag along here and there. The three main guys, myself and two others, were all huge football players with the smallest of us standing about 6'4", 230 pounds. So we were never really scared to do any of these things as we looked like a pretty intimidating group of guys. I had to work late on a Friday night, so they decided to go visit this world without me. Most of it sounded like the typical hype and adrenaline scare. One thing stuck out. They told me when they were there, they received texts from an unknown number stating, Why are you on Clinton Road? And the text even described what my friends were doing and where. It showed me the text, but I figured they were faking it, trying to make it sound scary, knowing I'd be mad that I missed out. They also explained to me a legend that a child died in the water under the bridge on the road, and that if you throw change, the ghost boy would return the change to you. Known to us the ghost boy bridge. On top of that, there's a ridiculous bend in the road there called Dead Man's Curve. That even if you're doing a modest 30 miles per hour, you could easily crash and tumble off the cliff. I, it's said that a ghost truck will chase you throughout the road and try to get you to crash. I call total bullshit. Then I convinced them to take me the next day. Being I was off of work, it did not disappoint. We get there and immediately I see the road is in the middle of the road covered with ritual signs all over the road. I knew that this was not the typical road. We came up to the bridge and parked. As soon as we got out of the car, I checked everyone's pockets so that they wouldn't be trying to pull anything slick to try to drop change in the road when I wasn't looking. 
There were a total of five quarters, each one each for us. We all talked to men a lot over the bridge. About five minutes go by in silence. I decided to break the silence by stating, and told you bullshit. We then turned to walk back to the car. We get about 10 feet away and clean, clean, clean. The sign of chains hitting the ground. We go back to the bridge and there are five quarters laying directly in between two yellow lines in the middle of the road. Thinking it was one of the other four people there messing with me, I came prepared. I then signed one of the quarters with my initials and we all throw them back in the water. About five more minutes go by and again I proclaim C bullshit and it was one of you guys messing with us. We then proceed to walk back to the car, get about 10 feet away and then again cling, cling, cling. The time the train's hitting the road, hitting the ground again. We turn back around and go see what it was. Sure enough, there were five quarters laying in the road with one of them having my initials in my handwriting. We were all going nuts. And decided to run back to the car. After getting back to the car, we decided to keep going to see what else the world has to offer. But keep in mind, we were spooked from the chain thing we just experienced. About ten minutes go by, a few of us had to pee really bad after holding it in for the car ride. So we pulled up to this random castle-looking building, no bigger than a small house, and you could tell it was extremely old. We decided to just stop there because there was like a little inch and vent in the road to where a car can pull over. We all get, get out to go. I go to my immediate left and do my business. After I'm done, I notice my one friend is talking towards the castle, almost in a trance-like state. We yelled his name to come back, but he kept walking. We all ran up and grabbed him and shook him out of it. At the question of why the hell he'd be walking up there alone, he stated that he was following me and that I waved him to come here without saying a thing to him. The problem with that was the fact that the entire group was actually behind him. We had all sorts of signals as a group, so I would never just wave to him to me without saying anything. So I'm 100% convinced that he saw a doppelganger leading him to trouble. The fear level is definitely higher now, so we decided to leave. Like I stated earlier, it's an extremely dark road in the woods, so you can't see much. You'd have to pass Dead Man's Curve twice, once on the way in and once on the way out. We're probably four miles from the curve when we see headlights behind us. We didn't think much of it, as we thought it was just a motorcade out here trying to do what we were doing. About a minute goes by after us talking about random stuff trying to ease the mood, but we know the headlights were directly behind us. The headlights look super old and you can tell with the truck because of how high the lights were off the ground. The thing was, we didn't see the truck, just the lights, because it was so dark there. Getting more creeped out, we told the driver to speed up and try to get this crazy driver off our tail, but he was sticking right on us, going around bends at high speeds, straight, straight away is everything. We couldn't shake him. The problem with this, we were in a brand new and modified sports and performance car. If someone were to be driving an old truck, or any truck for that matter, there's absolutely no way that they would be able to keep up with us for about more than 30 seconds. And this thing was on us for what seemed to be miles. Finally, about half a mile away from Dead Man's Curve, it's almost as if the light shut off and we lost it. So I remember pulling up right after the curve and pulling over so that we could find our way back to the main road. Meanwhile, there's woods on both sides of us. We're all talking very lightly, just in case something crazy would happen, we could hear it and be aware. Two minutes go by, after getting service to our phones, one of the guys got directions, so we were in the clear. Right before the driver put the car in drive, we heard a deafening screech. It sounded like a woman's scream, literally sounded about 20 feet away from us. So loud, I lost my hearing for a few minutes. When we looked over to where the noise came from, I will never, ever, ever, ever forget what we saw. I know this is going to sound crazy, but if I didn't, if it didn't happen to me, I would never believe it. We saw a typical movie scene, white dressed, black hair figure standing there, but next to that was a clown hanging upside down from a tree. Swinging back and forth, smiling at us, moving his head in any direction we moved. The clown was like an old school type of clown from back in the day, like sideshow creeper clown with a big circle of neckline. Oh my god. I can't remember much detail about it except for that damn circle neckline and chilling old school vibe. Now this totally could have been a point, but to have set that point up, you would have to have both the men's practice for someone to come to that exact spot, or balls of steel to be doing that in the woods. In the middle of nowhere, with just two people? Nah. 
I don't think I've ever been in a car that moved as fast as I was after that sitting. When we found the man rope and headed back, going back home, we did research and found out about the legend of the ghost truck, dead man's curve, etc. It was such a rush. By the time we got home, it was probably 2.30 in the morning. We'd forgotten already the feeling of how scared we actually were. So we all decided when we got home, let's do it again the next day, which would have been Sunday, to see who really had balls. We all parked in my friend's house so he could drive us, so we all had to drive ourselves home. I lived 15 minutes away on the way home. I noticed that a rundown church in my town had letters put up on the board. They never used it, so it was strange to see. The board stated, you're going to need Jesus on Sunday. Oh, shit. After about a minute after passing that church, my radio cut out and started playing Bloody Sunday. Sunday, Bloody Sunday. It's safe to say I made a call to the group saying we're not going back. It's been about seven years and I'll feel to go there ever again, but that night made me believe.